All over our cities, along our coastlines and across our green and pleasant land, an invisible army is fighting a never-ending war. Their enemy is the filth that we create and the vermin that thrive on it. Welcome to the hidden world of the Grime Fighters. On Grime Fighters tonight, in Essex, perhaps these houses are better than they look. Well, you got a certain notice on this, mate. This is disgusting. As it turns out, they aren't. This is probably bordering one of the worst I've ever seen. The sheriff views a holiday property, but is he ready for the dream home? Unfortunately, this will have to go at first light tomorrow, and um, I'm afraid it will be destroyed. And some sitting tenants in the country are in for a surprise. And then the squirrel comes up. Good night, Vienna. But first, in Essex, a row of terraced houses destined for demolition is currently home to all sorts of visitors. An anonymous phone call to the council has brought enforcement team Rob and Rob down to investigate. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, wow. In okay. this business, you don't have many happy surprises. Oh, okay. It tends to go from bad to worse. Okay. Wasn't aware of it was this bad. We're going to have to get some sort of action done and uh, get it all cleared, hopefully. Well, you've got a sort of notice on this, mate. This is disgusting. They're not so concerned with the squatters, but the conditions they're living in. A lot of this is domestic waste. It's probably coming from these guys that are living here, but there's no domestic collections because technically they shouldn't be here. So they're not getting their rubbish picked up. The easiest thing for them to do is chuck it straight outside their front door. These smells coming up, you can smell like... Um, human excrement, there's urine here, everything. So, yeah, this is a massive public health issue. We've had issues at this place um, on and off for a while now, um, but this is, this is probably bordering one of the worst I've ever seen. It is bad, it's seriously bad. But this is private property, and it's the responsibility of the landlord to clean it up. Yeah. You've got to get that landowner, yeah. speak to him now, yeah. and get him down here, cool. and see if he can get cool. down here today. All right, I'll tinkle him then. When Rob patrols the perimeter, worse goes to worse. Where are these people are squatting, they've got no running water, they've got no toilet facilities, um, and as you can see on the floor, they're obviously coming out here to use the toilet, but they're just leaving human excrement all over the place. Lovely. Cheers, Maddie. Thanks, bye. That was the landowner we just spoke to, and he's going to meet us over here about 2 o'clock so he can have a little look. I mean, he's blissfully unaware of basically what was going on by the sounds of it, so, you know, yeah, he's got to come over, he's going to have a look, and uh, obviously we'll work with him to get it all cleared up. While they wait for the landlord, the lads ponder the problem of squatters. There is sympathy for the people that are living here. They've obviously come to England for a, for a better life. They've obviously come they're coming illegally, or they've come from Eastern Europe. Um, and as you can see, they're, but they're, what they're living in, they're living in a rubbish tip. There's mice, there's rats, there's flies, the smell's really strong. Um, they're preparing food outside, they're preparing food like a couple of feet away from a pile of rubbish. Having a look at the washing on the line, there's a little girl's dress on the line. Um, so I think we're going to make a few further inquiries into this because if there's children living here, we need to get social services down to, um, to have a word because this is it's appalling for adults to be living in, so for children to be living here as well, it's just it's not on at all. Don't get me wrong, you know, people have got to live places. Yes, OK, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that, but, you know, it's just the rubbish aspect of it. It's just absolutely just terrible around the front. It's just tons and tons of rubbish. And yes, it does annoy me. But it's the job, it's what we do. Until the landlord arrives, there's nothing more that Rob and Rob can do. To the southwest of London lies the leafy suburb of Twickenham. On this day, everything here seems calm. All is not as it seems. There have been reports of, shall we say, smell in the neighbourhood. And that means business for grime fighter Joe and his team. Oh, lovely, look at that nice one for you. It's a blocked drain. See how deep it is? Got the glass on. Any splashbacks? What we have to do, we have to put the jet down. It's just more of a flexible hose. A bit more. We've got sort of little nozzles on the end which forces the pressure. 
We've got three at the back, and then we've got one in the front, which, which should clear the blockage. Nine times out of ten, it does. Yes, yeah, sorry, mate. It's just working its way down towards the main sewer now, and um, obviously there's a blockage in the main sewer. The hose will just keep going. Joe settles to the task with a will, but it ain't working. He's going to have to get to the root of the problem. So the sewer is running right past the property. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to check the main on the corner of the road and see if that's blocked or not. So we're going to look at that now, eh? Oh, there you go, the, the yeah. main's blocked. Check the next one. I think we have to get a combi. See how far the blockage is down. It's simply a case of not leaving a stone unturned. They must find the precise location. Oh, that's empty, good. Look at that. Bingo, the search is over. That's good news, yeah, because we haven't got to keep going for miles and lifting these heavy covers. But Joe soon realises it's a tough one. Get the big lorry in the jet now. So tough, you'll need Big Bertha. Basically what they're going to do, this is a bit of a high powered jet. It's 49 gallons a minute, it's a lot more powerful than the little hose you see us have down our red. So basically they're jetting from the empty manhole up into the blockage. Once they hit the blockage, the hose will stop. And then they go through the blockage, pull it back, and that will disintegrate the blockage and the flow will start flowing down. Big Bertha is big, but is it big enough? OK, they, they, they've jetted up now and they cleared the blockage. So what we do now is we go up to the upstream manhole to make sure that's spinning and, and emptying. Bertha has done her stuff, but not wishing to be yeah, yeah. picky, where is the smooth flow? Joe decides to jettison the jetter. This is a suction lorry. Basically what we do, we're going to suck the lump of rags and fat out, because obviously if we leave it in, it go downstream and cause another blockage. Joe is, of course, too professional to rest on his laurels. Job's all done now, and uh, now we move on to the next one. Hopefully get that one cleared as quick. East of London, there's a developer's development. Six family houses with easy access to the A13 and Essex, located in a quiet cul-de-sac with a landscape garden and a water feature. A Mediterranean-style kitchen, al fresco dining, an open plan bathroom, some exotic neighbours and family friends. The dream is over. Welcome to hell and a landlord in trouble. He's the owner and Rob wants to talk. Come follow me. I thought you were guided too. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? But you can see why we sort of like, you know, want to try and get something done. But this is the worst bit, and that, that bit and the bit out the front. But how has it got this bad? Now, we were trying to get permission to knock it down, to build warehousing, um, but Barking Council won't give us permission to knock them down. So. This here has got a lot of squatters. You get the squatters out once, they come back in again. The way to hell may be paved with good intentions, but Rob just wants the place cleaned up. Can you do it for me, sort of like, can we start on it sort of tomorrow and get it, and get it started, sort of like, and just get it done over the weekend, perhaps? I don't want to sort of like seem impatient, but it is, it is quite bad, isn't it? So if you just need to, time's of the essence, because I can't leave that like that. The squatters have caused a massive problem, which could cost the landlord thousands of pounds. Hello. All right. Family. <laughs> anyway, I'm off. Cool. Thank you very much, Dave. All right. Take, take care. care. All right. See take you care. Soon. He just said to me that they're going around collecting metals and stuff to sell to get money. So um, they're probably just sort of like picking up all sorts of other good stuff as well. They may well be doing um, clear, like garden clearances for Rubbish. cheap. Rubbish clearances. They probably, you can see they've got a large van there and they've got another transit around the corner. Um, they could well, we don't know, but they could well be doing um, garden clearances and bringing the stuff back here and just leaving it. Back tomorrow, first thing in the morning now, and the landlords agreed to get the clearance done, so we're gonna come back, make supervise it, make sure it does get done, um, and see what we get from there. Just, I think there's a lot more rubbish here than the landlord thinks there is, so it's gonna take at least a couple of truckloads, so looking forward to tomorrow morning. Coming up, the sheriff strides out and lives to regret it. 
If we all chose to live this way, we would be living in one big cesspit. In Essex, heavy metal disturbs the peace. And in the country, Dave the Verminator gets his man. They always strike there. I've never had a miss. Up and down the land, a little-known army of dedicated professionals are devoted to battling an ever-advancing tide of grime. In Grimsby, Sheriff John Waite has declared war on waste, and he's just arrived at the front line. What we've got here is a private piece of land in the main resort area of Cleethorpes, which is a traditional Victorian seaside town that's normally quite prim and proper. Travellers took a break here before travelling on. We've decided that the antisocial behaviour along with the, um, some of the criminal activities had, had reached a level where it could no longer be tolerated in any form. The sheriff finds the place empty, but it's not been left as it should. Certainly as uh, an officer of the environment, I would have to say it really is unacceptable. There's a, a caravan that clearly has reached the end of its life as far as the traveling community um, are concerned, and they've left it very nicely for us as an authority to clear up. Yeah, um, well, we can take a personal viewing of this uh, Desrez. Uh, not something that you like to see on location, location, but um, nevertheless, uh, something that I and others, unfortunately, have got to deal with. We've got a TV in there, whether or not it works. I, I doubt very much if it has a TV license, but there we go. I'm sure at one time this was probably quite a nice caravan. I'm sure it's seen many a, a good holiday. Unfortunately, it's ended up um, at the end of its life in a nice location, nice area, Cleethorpe, seaside, where it was meant to be. But uh, unfortunately, this will have to go at first light tomorrow, and um, I'm afraid it will be destroyed. These stones used to pave driveways, but now they're just rubble. Mm. Most of this um, is work that's been undertaken probably within a, a 20 mile radius of where we are now. But it should have gone to a properly registered uh, and licensed uh, disposal facility, and, but it's ended up in the streets of Cleethorpes. Clearly here, the sort of people that we're dealing with have got no interest in the area, no interest in what service we offer. They just abuse society. That's how they get through life. It is absolutely disgraceful. This particular area that I'm looking at now um, has been used as a, a latrine, for a better word. And we've got uh, human excrement along with uh, toilet paper, etc. And some poor operative tomorrow's got to come in and uh, get amongst that. If we all chose to live this way, we would be living in one big cesspit. But the sheriff is undaunted. Otherwise, he wouldn't be sheriff. It will be cleaned up, you know. It doesn't pay to become disillusioned. As I say, at least I can go home tonight and know that I've uh, done a good job today. Tomorrow, he'll be back and he won't be alone. In Essex, it's day three for Rob and Rob. The lorry has arrived to start the huge clean-up operation. And what's it called? The grab lorry. Happy days. We've come over the fence. It should be lovely. Thank you. Well, we was down here less than 24 hours ago. We've got the wheels in motion, and we're going to start clearing it straight away. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big positive. And working with a landlord, um, he was quite positive about it. So it's a good result all round, really. The grabber gets grabbing, and as for the rats, well, they get running. A new gadget we've invented in the street warden, it's called the rat catcher. Um, it's just the, the amount of rats we've seen in this bowl, there's every chance one could come towards you, so um, if we get a chance, we will use the rat catcher to quite good effect. It's surprising, really, because he Looking at the pole, you thought it's probably a truckload there, but you see there's still more left, so we're going to split the landlord and get him back to pick up the rest of it. But this might only be a temporary victory. What's needed is a long-term solution. It's in his best interest, really, to 
start the ball rolling and get something done here because otherwise it's going to cost them a fortune every time. So it's the best they can do is start the ball rolling, get the people out, get the land secured and go from there. I mean, it's starting to look better already, so well pleased with it. Time once again for Rob and his team to reflect on the human condition. I just can't believe, you know, that people would live like this amongst all this rubbish with the rats and everything else. It just makes you wonder what they've actually come from. It's sad, really sad. And like they are squatting, yes, but they're trying to live as well. Everyone deserves a roof over their head, I suppose. The immediate health hazard has been dealt with, but in cases like this, the worst advice is leave well alone. The problem could easily return. The sheriff and his posse are back in Cleethorpes with a fight on their hands. We're back here again this morning, another day and all that, but uh, yeah, we, um, we're getting the clean-up uh, operation underway now so that the area can be restored back to what it should be. We've got the whale cleansing truck uh, that's just going along the curb areas, but it'll also go up in the bushes with the hoses and flush away the uh, human feces, etc. Even for seasoned litter pickers, this assignment is a tough one. They're all in caravans, they're nobody uh, home address that sort, so there'll be no poll tax and everything, so what can you do? Is it a bit of a bugbear of yours? Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, I love my job, but why do they leave it, you know, like this? The old problem, you can't be in two places at once. Today's work could get missed, and then you get the member of the public phoning up saying, oh, my street hasn't been cleaned, and we've been down here. They think we've not been down there and thought about it. So what can you do? You just do as you're told by gaffers, don't you? It's not just five minutes work, is it? No. I would have been doing me up the street and me Victor Street this morning, do you know what I mean? And I've been taking off that to come on here, do you know what I mean? And that's how things go on, do you know what I mean? Life just isn't fair. The job's got to be done, and they've got to get on with it. And finally, one unwanted wagon is ready to roll. Windows open, Dad. Sheriffs don't become sheriffs unless they take their job very seriously indeed. I think this will come under uh, Operation Street Pride. Uh, restore it back to how it should be, which is normally very nice. In the old days, no visit to the countryside would have been complete without seeing at least one red squirrel. There are still more than 100,000 of them in parts of the UK. But they've been swamped by two and a half million grey squirrels, unloved, unwelcome, and now officially classed as vermin. For the owner of the Cotswold Wildlife Park, grey squirrels are a real pest. And Dave, their foremost foe, okay has come to pay his respects. This time of year at the park, we, we get the squirrels moving in and um, they cause a lot of damage by chewing through the top of the aviaries. Can't have that because they chew through the aviaries and the birds escape, so uh, we're going to go and put a few traps up just to round them up. But traps aren't the only weapon in Dave's arsenal. Just in case you do happen to see one in the tree, I do carry a small shotgun with me. Grey squirrels are thriving here, and Dave wants them to be the number one unprotected species. The squirrels come down and they'll chew holes into it, and then of course the birds get out. We also have provost squirrels in these uh, cages, which are from southern Asia, so there's always a chance that the, the grey squirrel can pass on diseases, and they also chew into the nest boxes. There's a lot of nest boxes in the woodlands. Um, they chew into the nest boxes, steal the eggs and the, and the chicks in the spring. So we want to keep, keep the squirrels down and, uh, and then everything's sweet. These traps that I use here, they are very powerful things. He's fixed to the tree. I have a bait offer in him. And then the squirrel comes up and when he goes for the bait offer, Good night, Vienna. Very powerful. They don't 
They don't take any prisoners. They kill instantly and they never miss. Pop a little bit of maize in there. A lot of people don't agree with them being, being controlled, but there's no option. There's, you have to do it here. You can't have birds out all the time and uh, damage disease spreading. For Dave, there's nothing sentimental about this business. This is one I put up a couple of days ago. I did check it yesterday. I have no time for squirrels. I'm not a great lover of squirrels, but they're a living thing. I mean, and if they've got to be controlled, then do it in the, in the most humane way possible. I've never had a miss. The neck's completely broken. The squirrel is dead in a flash. That is how I consider the proper way to control squirrels. So, there we are. The grey squirrels at the wildlife park have only one regret. They just wish they were red. Since filming the show, the Essex squat is still being cleared. But so far, the squatters remain. Grime fighter Joe... Very sexy, eh? ..continues to insist that the drain should not take the stray. And in Cleethorpes, the sheriff plans a big roundup on the range, but not just yet. What I'd like to think is I'm going to clean the whole area up, maybe one day. <laughs>